Today we are sharing our top tips for how to prepare for a cross-country move. We have never made a cross-country move ourselves. No. We have only moved. Um, every time we've moved, it's only been across town. But we are two um, relocation specialist real estate agents, meaning we work with a lot of relocation clients, people who are relocating from one end of the country to the other all of the time. And we're just going to share some things we've learned from their experience that hopefully can help your experience go a little bit smoother. So if anyone has any real estate needs or questions, feel free to reach out. We are um, based in Oregon. However, no matter where you're at watching this, we can set you up with a solid real estate agent to help get your needs met. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Spencer. Yes. And I'm Mariah. And yes. if you're in your car listening, this is fabulous. You do not actually need to visualize this video. Get the <laughs> audio. That's why we have professional mics. Make sure you tune in weekly to this podcast. We come up with new content just for you. And this is nationwide stuff. And it's very applicable to maybe your life right now. And yes. we deal with a ton of out-of-state clients, just like yeah. Mariah was saying. And it's people just like yourselves reaching out saying, you know what? I'm interested in moving to this place. It might not have to be in Oregon, but we are connected with thousands of agents nationwide. And we want to connect you with the best fit. So please feel free to reach out to us and we are happy to help in any way. If you are thinking about moving to Oregon specifically, specifically, or if you don't know where you want to move and Oregon might be a place on your list, we do have another YouTube channel called Oregon Homes with Mariah Vetris Crawford. And we both go on there and chat all about moving to Oregon specifically. Mm -hmm. So um, towards the very end of today's show, we're going to get into some more um, practical like packing tips that we've seen help our clients that have been moving across the country, mm -hmm. make things go easier. But first, we're going to share um, the first step. And that is the first step when you decide I'm going to make a move across the country is to find a real estate agent who specializes in working with relocation clients. This is really important because not every real estate agent, actually, it's a very, very small amount, smaller I would say, than you would think. smaller than you would think percentage of real estate agents that actually consistently work with relocation clients. Now, your average real estate agent out there that just or doesn't specialize in anything, I guess you could say, they might sell a home a year to a random, you know, out of state mover but client or whatever, but it is not something that they have systems down and they've just been doing consistently that they have the people, the team in place who does it consistently, like their lender, their, um, their home inspector, their, their escrow team, they're all just used to doing it consistently together as a team. And we really have built that. And I think that it is really important because, there's just certain things. I mean, for example, I've heard from people who are not used to working, working with a lot of relocation clients. I've heard from realtors say they will just FaceTime the buyer. There's a lot of errors with that because one, it's going to be blurry. You're not going to see the best, um, the home in the best light. And you're not going to be able to rewatch it and rewatch it. And so we right. have systems to get you the video. If you really want us to FaceTime you, we can do that as well. But there's just, when we're doing like a virtual tour for you, there's systems in place to assure that you know what the house across the street looks like. And you bringing up that point. Yeah. It, it like reminded me of an actual scenario of when I FaceTimed a client, when we were rookies, all of this out of state stuff was new. We were just getting systems in place. Yeah. And it happened to be a home like what? two hours away from uh, from us yeah so i made this drive and i was just like mm, yeah should i take some videos on my phone but ultimately the client wanted to facetime me on yeah. the showing guess what happened i didn't have internet reception <laughs> and i had terrible cell service oh, no. the screen was uh, blotchy and right. just pixelated and we kept cutting in and out and these people were all the way from maine wow. and i mean it was it was rough because a, I spent all the time to get there in that area, and this is like a $1.5 million home. How unprofessional was that of me? Yeah. And it's simply because I did not know, but now we have trials, we have right. errors, we've fixed things, we yeah. have great systems made for our out-of-state clients yeah. that's giving you the best information, but ultimately the best visual of a mm -hmm. home here in our specific area to create success down the road when we do get something under contract. Definitely. There's a lot of like back end things that go into all of that that 
Um, like I said before, just a agent that isn't used to working with a bunch of relocation clients on a very consistent basis and doesn't have these systems in place just wouldn't know Mm -hmm. to do. And it just would make the whole process just not as smooth. So, um, that's just one example. So why is this the first step? Well, I think that, I think that the biggest thing is reaching out to your real estate agent, they're going to be able to help paint the best picture for you of, you know, that they can without you actually seeing it here. Um, they're going to paint the best picture for you of the town that you're moving to of the different sides of town, the different neighborhoods and having them as that guide, that local expert, um, before you even do anything else, I think is really, really helpful because from there, you'll kind of have a better idea of what sides of town to do more research on, on your own, what, you know, areas you might be interested in, that type of thing. Yeah. And I always love like getting a feel for the agent. So if I'm referring you to an agent in the area, you're specifically wanting to move in. I'm always calling and asking them their knowledge. So I love working with home base alumni that are born and raised in those particular areas. I got a really cool guy in Oklahoma City, for instance, and I called him because one of my clients are moving here from Oregon to Oklahoma. And he was born and raised. He knew every answer to my questions. And he simply just was awesome and fabulous. So that's our goal and intent is to familiarize ourselves with our certain areas, but also another agent in a different area to connect you with. So they are giving you the most knowledge in answering all the questions you're having for them. Mm -hmm. The next step is figure out what needs to be done to your current living situation. So a lot of our clients who are relocating to Oregon, our area, they have a home to sell. And, you know, we're, we're coming across this a lot right now, just because most people have either bought their home when interest rates were historically low, or they refinanced their home when interest rates were historically low. So there's a lot of people with their houses, they have very low interest rates and it's very hard for them to get rid of that. So a lot of our clients who would just sell their home, no questions asked in a different market are looking into potentially keeping their home as a rental if they're able to. Um, But regardless, a lot of our sellers um, or a lot of our buyers are also sellers where they're at. They need to sell their home or, um, could you turn it up a little? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know what I was gotcha. going on there. <laughs> well, you're, you're getting in the red. You're eating the mic. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was changing. Um, a little technical difficulty there. Um, but anyway, a lot of our, um, clients have a home to sell. So this can look many different ways. Sometimes our clients will sell the home and then, you know, handle that and then move here and house hunt. Most often they'll do both at the same time. If they have, uh, you know, that option, they will sell their home and then write a contingent offer, Mm -hmm. um, which we could do a whole show on what contingencies and what that would look like. Yeah, that's a really good (laughs) idea. And then they'll house hunt here virtually while their home is selling. Mm -hmm. Other times they will just buy a home here and then sell their home after. So it all depends on your situation. Um, But all I'm trying to say is I really drug that out. Really, all I'm trying to say is you just need to figure out what you're going to do with your current home. Yeah. And there's a lot of variables in transitioning. Do you need to sell a home? Are you renting currently? And so you can really buy anything in our Pacific area. It's really just a time frame base. And then ultimately you deciding where you want to be settled at. I think that's one of the biggest things when clients are coming from out of state and maybe never being here is, you know, they don't necessarily know or there's that fear factor of man, I don't want to buy a house side unseen. And then I get there and I don't like the location or area or town. So there, there are some variables and that's why it's important to be working with a knowledgeable buyer's agent that specializes in relocation clients. Yeah. And there are, like I mentioned, there are many different ways to house hunt. So if you are relocating, it doesn't have to look just one certain way. You don't have to be here. We've seen clients um, move into, you know, sell their house or get rid of their lease where they were living and then come to Oregon and get an Airbnb, a long-term rental Airbnb and stay there while they're house hunting. We've seen clients just fly into town for the weekend and do all their house hunting. Just one weekend kind of is a little more pressure because it's like, you can't be as picky if you're just there that weekend and you need to buy then. Mm -hmm. Um, we've seen clients, most often do we do the virtual tours and they aren't actually here when they're house hunting, but there are options and we can figure out what way works best for you. Absolutely. 
Okay. So, um, now that we've dealt with, those are kind of like the major big things you need to do first logistically, as well as speaking with a lender, which I think kind of goes into play with deciding. Um, if I were deciding, okay, I want to buy a house here. Um, but I don't know if I want to sell my house or keep it, I would definitely be talking to a lender about that because they will show you what it's going to look like either way, if that makes sense. If you can afford to buy a house without selling your current home, if you have one to sell, they'll tell you all the options. Mm -hmm. And so that's really important as well. Um, Okay. So the next thing, um, this is something anytime we've moved, we always do this. This cuts back on moving costs and that is really do a massive decluttering. Um, The less things you have to move across the country, obviously, the easier it's going to be. Well, you don't know how expensive moving is until you're really in the situation, especially hiring like professional movers. Yeah. It's a lot of money. Right. A lot of money. And we've never moved across the country, so we've never even experienced, you know, the the cost. But I know I've heard clients say oh, in certain instances... 10 to 12 grand. Yeah, I've heard a lot of times them say, like, it honestly would be cheaper to buy, depending on where they're coming from, new furniture where they're at and just sell their furniture and not move it. So obviously every situation is yeah. different, but... Um, That's really true. It's true. Do a big declutter, um, Facebook mar- Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, Goodwill, all of the places mm-hmm. to get rid of your things yeah. that you don't need. Okay, um, the next tip is write in your offer that you want the house to be professionally cleaned before, yeah. you, before you close. If, if the scenario fits. I yeah. mean, there are some houses where it, it's not to standard. <laughs> so you definitely yeah. want to include that with your initial offer. And then ultimately we've seen it where sellers just leave their house dirty. Even if it was a clean house, a nice house, some people it's a little disrespectful to leave your house and not vacuum for instance, or wipe down the countertops or even cabinets where you've stored food for 10 plus years. Yeah, true. You know, there's crumbs in places and it's always nice leaving keys with the new owner with, um, a good head on their shoulders, you know, like, Hey, we, we it's ready for you to move into and simply enjoy this home. And so we do want to just elaborate and tell you there are some scenarios where we don't have control of a home that was left not clean. And so sometimes there there's instances where we step up, we've helped uh, pay for a, a cleaner because right. we've walked in, maybe inspected the home and it just didn't look to our standard. And we yeah. want to make sure your transaction, you were having a happy transaction. And the last thing that happens mm-hmm. is we give you keys and walk into your new home, right? Yeah. So we want to make sure that first appearance and first, um, first impression I'm trying to say is yeah. the best. And you know, it's our job to make it the best. I usually recommend, yes, putting it in the contract. And that means the sellers, sorry to cut you off. That would mean that the sellers would pay for it. You're asking them to pay for it. And I don't know. I just always think it's a good thing to do because it's really not, it's not like you're asking for closing costs to be paid for. I mean, you're not asking them for an arm and a leg. Like it comes out of the sale of the home at closing. If you're asking for it like that in the offer. And Mm -hmm. so really what's like a couple hundred dollars, you know, off of, the purchase price like it's usually it shouldn't be that big of a deal but right um we had an instance not too long ago where a a family was buying a house from they were moving here from california and we noticed right before closing uh, just a few days or so before closing they were going to come to town the day that it closed and we noticed you know this house has been vacant for it was a flipped home it's been vacant for quite a while and went into the home and noticed it's actually and not in the best like it needs to be cleaned yeah. pretty well and so just last minute had a professional cleaner out there and had it cleaned up for them so that they were able to drive all the way down here get here at one in the morning when they you know was their final arrive arrival time right. and not have to worry about staying the first night in a dirty uncomfortable empty home and, and that's what it's all about yeah you know service and making sure our clients are happy at the end of the day and if we yeah. got to step up and and do the right call we're going to definitely do the right thing because you chose us you selected us to represent you and we honor that and really value that so all the referrals you can give we'll take yes Okay. So the next tip is label your boxes. So like I said, sometimes our clients will drive from their state. You know, we, we work with clients from 
it's crazy the people it's kind of interesting to hear the kind of people that move to oregon they're from so many different states texas iowa like random states florida faraway states close states but a lot of them are from California, Montana, Idaho, states that are close enough to just drive, you know, Mm -hmm. drive here. Um, And so a lot of times our clients will be driving to their new home. And because they've been driving so late, they get here. Like I said, with our last client, they'll get here at like one in the morning. And if that's the case and you're staying the first night in your house, you really want to make sure that you have a box of whatever it is that you're going to be needing that night and the next morning because you don't want to be unpacked in your car at one in the morning with all your, you, you just don't want to deal with that in the dark like you don't labeling realize what is you good need until like yeah. you walk into an empty house and you're like yeah. oh you know what i yeah i don't have this and you know it it does happen um us personally that's happened to us when when we've transitioned to, to our homes so yes please label your boxes and have the necessities i would say the first night especially maybe a night light <laughs> <laughs> that's always good you know the, the a new house is always darker than you it's darker than you think expected at night it's true you don't have lamps i mean with no, all I, the lights off <laughs> it's true okay um the next p- more practical packing tip is put your bed or pack your bed in an area that's easily accessible mm-hmm. and unpack your bed first because that's probably Everybody the first thing you Everybody always need. puts it at the very back of the truck. Everybody puts it against the the head of the of the trailer or the U-Haul truck and and then they pack it in from there and it's like the last item to get unloaded. Now these big bulky furniture, I would suggest putting those in last. Um, but then again, it is tongue weight. So if you are hauling a trailer, you got to be educated right. and, and see how right. it's hauled appropriately. But definitely want to make sure that your furniture items that you are needing, especially those first nights or first week, um, is accessible to you. Yes. Okay. And the last tip is learn about the area. There are so many resources online nowadays. It's very easy to oh you know go do a quick YouTube search. It's so hard <laughs> not to know yeah. about the area, or even like certain events in the city you're moving into yeah. that first week you're moving in. Follow a Facebook group. I mean, yeah, that's as so simple as it could be. If you don't have Facebook, I'm sorry, Google it. But I think Facebook might be one of your best friends, though. If you're moving to a new city, just search local events what's happening that weekend if you got keys on the Friday so you can go out and be a part of that community because ultimately it's going to give you that sense of of um, I, not respect but a sense of community yeah. and understanding of the area you yeah. just bought and moved into and you can do I mean you really can do a lot of research about the area before you actually get oh, there no. I've really never seen like I said we have people moving here from all all over all of the time that have never been to our state many times they move here they buy their house they close on their house and they don't come to the state of oregon Mm -hmm. or the town that they're moving to until after they close on the home which sounds crazy but we've never had somebody at least tell us we've never had somebody tell us at least it wasn't what they expected we're very used to hearing that the area surprised them in a positive way and they were prepared this is what they had expected and i think one of the biggest reasons is because because there's so many resources online. You can very easily in 2023, going to be halfway through almost 2024. Yeah, I know, um, right? You can very easily find out what you need to know. Everything's at a click of the button, yeah. you know, and soon it's going to be all virtual and pop up on a screen oh, no. and there's not going to be any screens anymore. It's just going to be an image I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know. I don't like that. You know? Maybe. <laughs> it's like... You're probably right, but I don't like everything's that. Everything's turned into 3D <laughs> or virtual reality and, you know... It's true. AI. I was listening oh to something gosh. about, like, artificial intelligence It's and so crazy because, like, morning. watching the Terminator series when I was a young boy, <laughs> it's becoming more and more oh relevant with AI. It's like, what the heck? Yeah, we don't have actual robots in our world, but, like... Well, our vacuum's a robot. The technology part of AI is just unbelievable because, like, you don't need the face-to-face interaction... Imagine like 
yeah. the person that's texting you. I mean, that's just, it's it's unbelievable. What I was hearing this morning, this is off topic, but no, what I was hearing fine. this morning was um, saying how the AI, what they think they're going to be able to do in the next couple years for real estate is to be able to find houses for buyers better than the real estate agents can because... My AI does it, that already. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, through, oh, wow. through our website. If you're not okay. connected with our website, I'm, I'm going to drop a link below, but wow. also it's www.vetruscrawfordrealty.com. <laughs> Com. That's Vetris Crawford Realty dot com. V E T T R U S Crawford Realty dot com. And what's really cool is we we do pay quite a bit for this as a resource for you, and it's yeah. absolutely free. All you need to do is put your full name, email, and phone number. Yes, if you want to really look at homes, but have an AI connected. Remember, it's free for you. You got to give us that information so we can stay connected. Maybe you're not even going to be using us here in Oregon, but it will suggest homes that you have been Googling, searching on Zillow, or even just navigating through our website, pressing the like button, saved homes, and it's going to algorithmize? Algorithmically. Algorithmically. Yeah. Categorize your listing suggestions Mm -hmm. that are going to work best for you. It's like retargeting the way that it knows you better than you know you. It's so crazy. Like I... My assistant's name's Anna. Yeah. She's got a face. You know, I I, I uploaded a photo from from online. I didn't know. (laughs) know, So she's a real person out there. I did not know that our website did that. Yeah. I didn't I knew we u- were able to utilize artificial intelligence yeah. to, you know, help our clients, but I didn't realize it was like quite that advanced. We're, so that's I, cool. I believe we're using the number one AI assisted um web website wow. for, for realtors. So wow. I mean it's it's quite unbelievable. It's a it's a learning curve. That's unbelievable. But ultimately it's helping you guys and I mean, yeah, I'm able to reach tens of thousands of people. Imagine this in one second, less than a second, right. you know, and that's through this artificial intelligence. And I love that. you can have full on conversations, reply back with a home, maybe that fits your needs better, critique a search. And, you know, it's just like texting an assistant of mine, uh, an assistant of mine that right. I'd be paying payroll for. So it's very interesting. Something to think about. If you haven't gone to our <laughs> website, view it, go see it. All right. Well, thank you for hanging out with us this week. We come on here every single week and we talk about real estate so subscribe if you had haven't head over to our channel we have a handful of playlists that you might find valuable and we will see you next week